New to Kyoto or simply want to brush up on Kyoto's most iconic spots? I've got you covered. With the charm of Kyoto lying in its ability to surprise and enchant you at every corner, here are Kyoto's most visited tourist destinations. They might not be my top picks, but they must be famous for a reason, right? Keep on watching all the way to the end where I will be giving you my overall top tips to help you navigate with ease. Would these earn a spot in your top 10? We start off with Fushimi in Aritaisha. It's most famous for its thousands of vermilion red Tori gates that create tunnels and trails behind the main shrine. The trails lead into the wooded forest of the sacred Mount Inari. And my top tip here is to plan to visit very, very early in the morning to avoid the coaches and tourists crowds or late in the evening where you also get to experience the mythical atmosphere of the shrine under the soft glow of the lantern lights. Hiking further up will make for great views over Kyoto and the further up you walk the less people that there will be. So that in itself might make for a great tip if you are traveling on a busy day. Next up is Kiyomizu Dera Temple, a UNESCO World Heritage Site that offers an incredible view over Kyoto. This temple is best known for its wooden stage that pokes out from the main hall, suspended above the hillside below. Visitors have been offering prayers at this site for over 1,200 years. Spring or fall make for a great viewing spot as a temple's large veranda offers stunning views of cherry blossoms and autumn colors. Don't miss out Jishu Shrine located at the temple. The two rocks in front of the shrine are called Love Stones and it's said that if you walk from one to the other with your eyes closed, you'll find love. Ninenzaka and Saninzaka area on the approach to Kiyomizudera is an iconic location to wander around. You've probably seen pictures of the pagoda in many guidebooks. With its traditional architecture, quaint streets and historic charm, Ninenzaka offers an immersive experience into the old world ambience of Kyoto. And my tip here would be to try to either consider an additional visit during the evening hours to experience the charm of the area under the soft glow of the lantern lights or time your day to catch the sunset. Ninenzaka takes on a different atmosphere at night when the lanterns are lit, creating a magical atmosphere. Our fourth stop is the Philosopher's Path, named after the famous Japanese philosopher Nishida Kitaro, who used to walk this path for daily meditation. It follows a canal lined with hundreds of cherry blossom trees, which makes it especially beautiful in the spring during the cherry blossom season, but equally nice any time of the year. And my tip here is to take a leisurely stroll among the path taking your time as it also is home to numerous smaller temples and shrines that are worth exploring. The Silver Pavilion is a great start to this walk. Okay guys, a quick side note, for those of you who might be watching and thinking, who is this guy? Why should I be listening to him? Well, hi, I'm Nathan Ninja Monkey, and I've been traveling to Japan for nearly a decade as a tourist, sharing my adventures and discoveries through videos. So if you wanna get an experienced tourist point of view, that's me, <laughs> you've come to the right place and hopefully you'll join the adventure and subscribe for more. It's a great way to support the channel. It's only a click away and it's free. Okay, back to the lists. So let's check out Nijo Castle, a flatland castle that is another UNESCO World Heritage Site. One of its unique characteristics is the nightingale floor, which chirps like birds when walked upon, supposedly as a security measure against intruders. This castle has a quite a different look to many of the others in Japan. My tip is not to miss the beautiful ornate interiors and the stunning gardens surrounding the castle. Nishiki Market in Kyoto is a must-visit destination for numerous reasons. Firstly, it offers captivating sensory experiences with its bustling atmosphere, vibrant colors and aromas. Secondly, the market is a paradise for food lovers, showcasing a wide array of fresh seafood, traditional snacks and local delicacies unique to Kyoto. The market's central location makes it an easy accessible and excellent place to conveniently explore other attractions nearby, making it a perfect addition to your Kyoto itinerary. My tip when visiting the market is to time your visit. The market is typically busiest during the mid-morning and early afternoon, so consider visiting earlier in the day to avoid the crowds. Also, bring cash. While some shops may accept credit cards, it's advisable to carry cash as smaller vendors and food stalls often prefer cash payments. Gion is known as Kyoto's most famous geisha district. It's filled with shops, restaurants, tea houses, and numerous stories where geiko and geisha and meiko entertain. 
The streets themselves are beautiful and exploring the area will feel magical. And nearby Osaka Shrine usually makes for a great place to experience the local atmosphere of the area's shrine and should not be missed. So my tip here is literally to wander the area, in the evening especially, to see Maiko or Geiko on the way to work, always remembering to be respectful. From here, we'll head to the iconic Golden Pavilion, or Kinkakuji, a Zen temple whose top two floors are completely covered in gold leaf. The temple beautifully reflects on the pond below, making for an impressive sight and a perfect photo opportunity. And my tip here is just like Mishimi Inari, is to try to avoid the weekend and arrive before opening. It will be hard to catch the temple without the crowds, but it doesn't make it any less special. Trying to get the front row seats by arriving earlier will help you capture the golden pavilion in the soft morning light. Ryoanji Temple is famous for its rock garden, the most celebrated in Japan. The garden consists of a rectangular plot of pebbles surrounded by low earthen walls, with 15 laid out in small groups of patches of moss. My tip is actually an interesting fact that will surely make your visit a little bit more fun. The garden's 15 stones are cleverly arranged so that there's always one rock that is hidden from view regardless of where the viewer stands. A reference to the Asian concept of 15 as a number of perfection. No person is perfect, so try to contemplate the garden from different angles and find your own interpretation of its meaning. And finally, from this top 10 list is the Arashiyama Bamboo Forest, Walking through this dense bamboo grove is like entering another world. The thick green bamboo stalks seem to continue endlessly in every direction and there's a sense of otherness that's quite unlike that of any normal forest. My tip is actually to venture a little bit further on to find the Okochi Sanso Villa at the end of the bamboo grove. This beautiful villa was once the residence of a famous actor and now is a lovely garden that's often overlooked by tourists. Its entrance fee includes a cup of match tea and a sweets, and the views from the garden with less people will be worth it, in my opinion, anyway. So I've highlighted some areas and things that tourists flock to. I do, however, recommend that you explore the many other temples, shrines and attractions that the city has to offer. And I really, really do encourage you to get lost and find something that might not even be in the guidebooks. With so many places to visit and things to see in Kyoto, here are some tips to hopefully make your trip even easier to navigate. Number one, make it a multi-day trip. Each location and area is steeped in history and the surrounding areas might also be of interest with even more shrines and temples and things to check out. Number two, plan your visit. Before your trip, research opening hours, closures and any special events happening in the area to make the most of your time. Number three, Transportation. Kyoto, believe it or not, is more of a bus city and you will likely also walk a lot. Checking out public transportation routes ahead of time will help. I highly recommend that you might want to consider taking a taxi at various points to make the most of your time. For example, a taxi to Kiyomizu Dera might be worth it as you can then stroll down the hill. Although taxis can be the pricier option, there might be a key moment when taking a taxi will not only save you time, but help you arrive before the tourist crowds. Number four, consider getting a one day or a two day pass if you are planning to make heavy use of the city buses. It can save you money and the hassle of finding exact change for each ride. Number five, remember that public transportation can get very crowded during rush hour generally between 7.30 a.m. and 9 a.m. and between 5 p.m. and 7 p.m. and during the peak tourist seasons, so plan your day accordingly. And number six, if you're finding difficulty communicating your destination, have the address written down or on a map to show your driver. This can really be helpful. Number seven, okay, many of Kyoto's attractions are actually within walking distance of each other, especially in areas like Higashiyama and downtown. So planning to visit sites in the same area will save you time and energy. I do hope that you found this guide and tips helpful for your future trip to Kyoto. And as always, feel free to join my adventure and subscribe. It's only click away and it's free. Also, I'll actually be traveling across Japan on an epic six week adventure as a tourist, which will not only be documented on here, but also on my new second channel, The Happy Gaijin, where I will be posting more up to date vlog style videos and streams. And hopefully you'll be able to get to know me a little bit better too. So why not show your support there too and be among some of my first subscribers. 
And if you found the video helpful and like what I do and want to support the channel, then how about consider helping support financially via a super thanks or simply watching some of my other videos. It's a great way to tell YouTube that I'm doing a good job. Well, hopefully I'm doing a good job. Till next time, stay positive and be a happy guiding. Arigatou gozaimasu. Gracias. Thanks. Bye.